Scientists have bred new yeast strains to brew new beers? I'll drink to that. Hey, all you adults of legal drinking age, Julian here for DNews. I'm fond of beer, particularly lagers, but they're all kinda samey, like the difference between vanilla and French vanilla. Ales, on the other hand, come in every color of a gold to brown rainbow, and they have a big variety of flavors. Why is that? Well, to find out, first, we need to know a little bit of history. Do we not have the, like, the graphic? Are we gonna, okay. Ale has been around for about 7,000 years and probably started as a happy accident. Leave some barley and water out in the sun, some airborne fungus gets in there and goes to town on the barley sugars, converting it to energy through a process called fermentation, and the waste product is alcohol. I wonder who the first guy was that was willing to drink nasty, fermented, warm barley water. He's probably the same guy who got the first hangover. Lagers, though, are much newer to the scene. They only started popping up in Europe in the 1500s, right around the time Europeans started making trips to the New World. It's not a coincidence. The fungus used for fermenting lager is a hybrid of the yeast used for ales, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and another yeast indigenous to Argentina, Saccharomyces eubianus. It wasn't intentional, but somehow S. eubianus must have hitched a ride back to Europe and mixed with the local fungus. The new yeast species, called Saccharomyces pastorianus, needs colder temperatures to ferment sugar, and at the end of the fermentation, it sinks to the bottom of the mix instead of rising to the top. Oh, and it's got four sets of chromosomes, making it a leto tetraploid. Not necessary to know, but still pretty cool. Getting those parent species to rumble in the fungal jungle and still make baby yeasts that are good for brewing isn't easy, though, and it needs human help to keep propagating. The result is we've been making the same strains of S. pastorianus over and over and using them for our lagers, and that's why most of them taste pretty much the same. So, knowing this, what if we bred new yeast for new lagers? Researchers at the University of Leuven in Belgium did just that. They did the microbial equivalent of putting S. eubianus and S. cerevisiae in a room, lighting some candles, putting on some Marvin Gaye, and letting nature do its thing. And do its thang it did. To quote the researcher Dr. Kevin Verstreppen, we were able to get some serious sexual action between our yeasts, which resulted in hundreds of new lager yeast strains. Serious sexual action. Those are a PhD's words, not mine. They tested 31 of the strains on a small scale, and while some of them were terrible, 10 of them performed well in terms of flavor and fermentation speed. Verstreppen claims, two were magnificent. They fermented more quickly than the commercially used reference lager yeast that we compared them to, and they produced really nice flavors. I'd like to see this taken to the next logical step. Instead of breeding the yeast and hoping for the best combination of genes, skip the middleman altogether and genetically modify the yeast. Select your favorite flavor and aroma elements and splice them right in. Why not? I'm picturing a future where a hundred years from now, hobbyists can custom make their yeast in their garage. Craft microbrewing? Try craft microorganism brewing. I know, as soon as you bring up genetically modified foods, some people freak right the geek out. Lacey talks about the deal with GMOs here. GMOs are plants that are genetically engineered by splicing their DNA with other species, producing plant, animal, bacterial, and viral gene combinations that you probably, definitely wouldn't find in nature. Would you drink a beer that has been made with genetically modified yeast? I mean, there's no actual yeast in it, and we're just combining genes from yeast species we're already breeding, but I'd take a swig. I mean, I do that for most beers anyway. But let me know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time on D News.